Hi there, this is Matt Trout from Engineer Inc. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different today. Normally, uh, my company produces educational videos uh, for engineering courses, but I've been looking online um, at a bunch of different people who have posted videos about uh, recycling plastic and then reusing plastic, which otherwise would be a waste stream for them, uh, to manufacture uh, plastic objects at home, uh, maybe even make filaments for 3D printing. Uh, and what has uh, annoyed me a little bit is that there's sort of two different ends of this, this spectrum for hobby scale commercial recycling. So the first one uh, is there's a, a group um, that it, they're doing great work, but uh, they're producing uh, essentially industrial quality hobby scale equipment. Um, and they say that, well, you know, anybody can get their hands on this equipment. They've got the, the drawings out there uh, and the equipment can be built, uh, you know, with just you know, normal household tools and equipment, not too difficult to make. Um, and then they say, go find somebody that has a laser cutter and they can laser cut the, the, the uh, blades on the shredder that we're going to use as the fundamental piece of equipment. Uh, for your plastic shredder and that, that didn't sit very well with me because well I'm a mechanical engineer and I don't have a friend with a laser cutter so um, that that seemed to be not not a viable approach um, the other end of the spectrum of these guys who are like well I can recycle plastic and I've got this whole great scheme and it doesn't cost me anything and life is good and then they'll take 10 minutes of video showing them cutting up one plastic bottle with a pair of scissors and it's usually played at 10 times speed so that's not particularly viable either if it takes them an hour to cut up a single plastic bottle to get the feed material that they need to uh, to do their plastic recycling so <coughs> I thought a little bit about um, how to possibly do this better um, and it occurred to me that um, a lot of people have paper shredders in their home and perhaps a paper shredder could be used um, as a, a solution that's somewhere in the middle between some scary laser cut industrial um, you know multi thousand dollar piece of equipment that you have to go out and have custom built and sitting around your house all day with a pair of scissors cutting up the plastic so um, I'm not actually sure how this is going to work I haven't tested it but uh, you guys will learn along with me uh, how, how well this works so what I've done um, is I've gotten just a, a couple of milk bottles so these are just standard milk bottles that you buy that have gallons of milk in them um, and they're made out of um, HDPE which is high density polyethylene uh, number two on the, the uh, one through six recycling numbers there <coughs> and with uh, an exacto blade I've cut um, a milk bottle uh, I cleaned it first and cut it just into a strip like this that hopefully is competent to fit into my paper shredder, which is right here. Um, this is a Go Echo Life um, 18 sheet paper shredder purchased at Costco uh, for a little less than $200. <clears throat> Still relatively expensive as paper shredders go, but um, if you're gonna use it to process plastic, uh, then perhaps uh, not not too expensive, at least in comparison to getting uh, your shredder blades custom laser cut uh, by our our colleagues who are doing that elsewhere. So what I've done, I've, I've emptied out the bin here, so uh, there's no no paper residue in the bin, and I fed through um, a lubrication sheet so that the blades are totally lubricated. Um, I'm imagining that that that's. Uh, better for uh, dealing with this thick plastic than uh, if the sheets are not lubricated. Um, and I'm just gonna run some plastic sheets through and we'll see what, what the end result is. So I'm gonna start small. This is the, the top of that, that milk jug. So we'll see how this works. I'm just gonna feed it in here. And uh, <coughs> it fits, but we have a challenge, which is we need to actuate the light sensor, so I'm just going to use a little piece of paper to actuate the sensor and the plastic seems to go through without too much difficulty. This is the bottom, which again I've cut flat so it'll fit in there and we'll just actuate the sensor and run that through. So this is a, a challenge with this clear stuff is that it doesn't actually 
the photo sensor. So we wouldn't have the same problem with the not clear stuff. Uh, here's the handle, so we'll run this through. Again, just activate the photo sensor. We'll leave that over there because it's not. Okay, now here's the big piece. We'll activate the sensor and run this through. Okay, um, and I'm going to just leave this little piece of the handle out because it was having trouble going through. <coughs> okay, so that seemed to run through just fine. Let's see what we got. So I'm going to um, just run it forward a little bit to clear any plastic. Run it forward a little bit to clear any plastic out of the blades. I'm going to kind of reach back here. With the door open, the safety is on so that this thing won't actuate on me. Cut my fingers off. There we go. Okay, and there's still a few little residual pieces of paper in here, um, which if I just ran it forward a little bit longer before putting the plastic in, the paper would be cleared out. But you end up with um, pretty nice cross-cut plastic strips like so um, that can then be placed into the uh, hopper of a melting system that can be used to fabricate, uh, for example, <coughs> 3D printing filament. So there you have it. Uh, my alternative solution to uh, either laser cut blades for your custom built plastic shredder um, or spending hours and hours and hours using scissors. All right, thank you for your attention. Uh, once again, this has been Matt Trom from Engineer Inc. And uh, look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, bye.